Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you, as always. And um, just before the teachers go to Children's Church and uh, all the nursery teachers that are involved, I had a very good announcement to give you today, which I couldn't announce to you last week. But you know our heart is always, as a team, um, we always look together. We're part of a big family all over the world. And each church is important to the Lord. And we all look after one another and see the needs of different churches. And um, Brother Mickey has been in, in contact with me, as with the team of elders that I'm a part of. And he said, Neil, what is the desire of your heart for these next for this next while, while you're going through this process of change and treatment, etc. And I said to, to Mickey, I said, Mickey, give me just a few days. I want to really pray. But I knew there was someone and a couple on my heart that I was pretty clear about. I'd spoken to, to Nick as well. and um, But I knew that it would be a shot in the dark because this couple that I had on my heart are so engaged in the work in Africa. <laughs> Every day they are just on the road. Um, and it's just, I just thought, Lord, this is what I have in my heart. I'm going to share this with Mickey and the team. And I'll leave it up to you. And the couple that were on my heart um, were a couple that many of you do know. Some of you have even listened to their meetings on the, on the web and the website and through the CTMI links, and it was Richard Langworthy and Ingrid Langworthy. Richard, as you know, has been raised up by the Lord uh, to be an instrument that God is using in Africa, not only with the leaders, he's involved a lot in different churches, he was involved in the last leaders conference in uh, Nairobi with Mickey. And you know, I just thought, Lord, this is the desire of my heart. But it was so amazing to get that good news when I woke up one morning and Brenda came through to the room and she said, Neil, I've got good news for you. And I said, oh, I, I, I would love some good news. <laughs> and um, she just said that Mickey had spoken to Richard and Ingrid and just said to them, pack your bags. Brother Neil needs you. Uh, Brenda needs you. The church needs you. And I, and I said to Mickey, what was on my heart, and I, I think it's important that you know this, that I felt it was important for the church where we are. Each church needs to be looked after by the Lord. You can't just make light decisions and anyone just come here. That's why I didn't just go back lightly. I said, give me time just to pray and to seek you. And I felt, and I expressed this to Mickey, I said, Mickey, I feel that it's important that there's a mature gift that comes to this church. Not... Uh, an indictment on anyone young, but I felt that it was important for the church to have a mom and dad on the ground, to be a support to Brenda and I, to be a support to the church, and for me to also breathe and not worry yes. about you. And that is, was my heart's concern and uh, Mickey's concern, and, 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 and was, we always consider the Lord's church because He loves His church and He loves you, and He knows what is best for you. And um, so the good news is, is that Richard made the announcement in the church in Zimbabwe. And I want to tell you guys, we are going to be very, very spoiled. Yeah. This is a gift from God, honestly. And I know that this is going to be part of his construction for the church here. Um, Richard just said, Neil, how long do you want us to come? <laughs> we said, as long as you can come. <laughs> anyway, so they're looking at coming at least till the end of December. And uh, he will be flying out on Wednesday. They announced to the church on, on uh, this Sunday. And all the churches prayed uh, for, obviously for myself and for Brenda. The, we, that's why it was in-house last week. We didn't want it to be public. What I shared last week in church, the, the testimony of what I shared is now on the website. But we only wanted to go onto the website after all the churches had known. And so that all the churches do know now, they prayed for us, they prayed for us as a church. Richard has been sent by the apostolic team here to be part of us, and to be part of the church, Ingrid, his wife. And I don't know if you know that Richard and Ingrid and Brenda and I worked together in the Zimbabwe days. Uh, when I came into the church, Richard was the pastor of the church. 
And so we go back many, many years, and it was so special to feel his heart for Brenda and I and Mickey. I mean, Mickey has just been an incredible support and the team um, from the day that they obviously heard the news. And um, we had a time yesterday which was very special, and I wanted you to know about that. There was a whole group of elders from the different churches that Skyped uh, with me and Brenda. And uh, yesterday, Nick was there. And he, uh, Mickey said that he woke up on Saturday, whenever it was, and felt that where James says, call the elders from the, or of the elders of the church when someone is sick, anoint him uh, with oil, and the Lord will raise him up. And I think we know that scripture very well, but I've always never, you know, I've always been an elder praying for someone, but never been the elder prayed for. And uh, it was so precious to have this team around us. We sat in our living room there, and um, Nick anointed me with oil. The guys were in full faith and encouraged us and prayed for us. And we had some encouraging words from the Lord. But it was a very, very special time. So we have a, a big army around us, brothers and sisters, that are with us as we're going along this new journey together. And you know what? Despite what is happening in my body, the Lord's plan doesn't change. You see, this is the danger now that we stop because we're looking at things in the natural. We, we do not stop. The kingdom of God continues. The building of the church continues. The healing process in me continues. The timing of God for my restoration and healing continues. And this week, just so that you know, I will be going um, for the... The treatment, maybe the start of the treatment this week, um, the chemo treatment, as you know, which, which goes along with colon cancer, and uh, they will be putting in a port on Tuesday. Please pray for me. There's a little port that they put in there so that when you go and have your chemo treatment, they administer that, and you don't have to keep having an injection every week or whatever. It's just part of the procedure. And um, so without getting into any details about anything, it's, it's all under control. We're going along the treatment process. But in the midst of that, we all know, and all those listening live stream today from all over the world, for Mickey, the team, um, we know that our eye is not on treatment. We thank God for that. We thank God for doctors. We thank God for Barbara, who's been a great support. And uh, all those in the church, all of you, and your, your prayers, your support. And as you know, I, I can't, it's tiring, I can't respond, but I, I, I hear your heart and know my gratitude is... is I'm so grateful for what, who you are in my life in the church. So I thought that would encourage you um, going forward that the Lord is not going to abandon us. He knows what's going on. He knows what gifts are needed for the church. But I want to encourage you right now. Take full opportunity because this is going to be a very, very special time for the church. But okay. So all the children, you're free to go. I just want to give that announcement and then I'm going to share a few things in my heart. Is it the... Guys, it's good to be together and to. I'd like to just share a little bit with you this morning. I believe that we need to continually be hearing the word of God for our lives. I think more than ever before, we all realize that our anchor is not the news of God, not the news of the world, but the news of the Lord. There's continual bad news that we hear every single day. But in the midst of that bad news, whatever that bad news is, we know that Jesus is on the throne. And I think the challenge for us as a church going forward and in our individual lives going forward, the greatest fight and the greatest challenge that we will have until the day we go to be with the Lord is this simple fight. And I want to read from 
2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want to read how Paul just finished the race in a very simple verse. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Paul says, For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. But now, he says in verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. What is that fight that he's talking about? And it goes on further and explains what it is. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And you see, that is our daily faith fight every day. We're just being brutally honest with ourselves. The fight that we have is to stay in faith. The fight that we have is the natural news, whatever that is, the natural circumstances, what we see happening in our family, what we would like to happen in our children, what we would like to happen in our grandchildren. There's always opportunity to fear. Always. Think about that. You know, I think about young parents today and grandparents today. Do you know that there are people that wake up with fear for their children? They wake up with a fear that how will my children going forward in this corrupt world that we're living in that is getting worse by the day, how are they going to survive? How are they going to survive at school? How are they going to cope with adversity? And, you know, for, for, for moms and dads and whatever that fear is, it can be those small things where you're waking up and you're thinking, but what will be the outcome? But this is where faith comes in. Because the natural news is the natural news. But the news of God is far better than that. Because we know that the Lord takes care of our children. And when I look at these precious children in the front row here today, I see that the Lord has His hand on their lives. He knows how to look after them. He knows how to look after you. He knows how to look after your own family. He knows how to restore what needs to be restored. Sometimes we look and we look with our natural eyes. And you see, that's the challenge I believe the Lord wants to bring to you and me today is that we keep the faith. And how do we keep the faith? By hearing what we hear, by seeing what we see, but now coming back to Jesus. Now coming back to put our eye not on that news, not on that situation, not on that lack, not on that mountain, but to put our eye back on who is greater than the mountain. Who is far bigger than any valley that we're walking through. And you see, when we stay in the Spirit, and that is our challenge every day, because your, your mind and your heart and everything about you wants to go down a road where you want to pursue the things that you're fighting with, your fears, your anxieties, your turmoil, your worries, your concerns. But we're going to see this morning that the Lord has a very, very clear solution for that. And I want to just read a little story and just a few little Snippets from it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Two Chronicles chapter 20. And this is the story of Jehoshaphat. He is the king in Judah. And there's a big vast army that is coming to attack him and the people of, of Israel, of Judah, and it's a quite a daunting test for them because they don't have the capacity to overwhelm this army in the natural. It's too big, it's too vast. But he goes through a process here which I think we should learn from. In verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared, but when he feared, Notice what he does. And he set himself to seek the Lord. Is it an indictment if one of us wakes up one morning and we have fear? Is that, is that an indictment on you? 
Is it, is it that the Lord demands that every day there's, you know, faith from the time we wake up and faith to the time that we end? There are times where we have real fears. Where they come from, whether they come into the mind, whether it's the playground of the enemy where he wants to play games with us. But wherever that fear comes from, there is a desire that the Lord wants to bring in our heart that when that comes, we turn our eye on Him. To seek Him. And what are we seeking? We are seeking for a word from God. Every time that fear grips my heart concerning my situation, my anchor are the words that God has spoken to me. And I keep going back and I keep going back and I keep reminding myself and meditating upon the word of the Lord that in my heart of hearts, I will refuse to bow my knee to anything. And the same for you. Because your trial is your trial. Situations that you face around you that are not easy, even your natural family, even your work situation, situations that are all different, all unique. But to remember that the Lord is with you. You're not alone. And victory is His. And you read further on here, and He says, verse 12, Our God will not judge them. For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. We don't know what to do in situations. How can we solve family issues? How can we turn the heart of our son back to the Lord? How can we just decide, Lord, bring me a wife today? Sometimes there's a struggle when someone wants to get married, and he's got this desire to get married, but he's fixed on it. Do you realize that God has a time for everything? He hasn't forsaken you. He hasn't forsaken any young woman here today. He hasn't forsaken any family here today. He hasn't forsaken your children. He is your shepherd. And He will take care of you to the day that you're going to be with the Lord. And that's our encouragement today. Because sometimes it feels there's a great multitude against us. But, but our eyes, you see, this is the... This is the the word of the Lord for all of us in times like this. Whatever we are going through. Maybe we've lost a job. Maybe, maybe there's just been a, a valley that we're walking through in some way. It doesn't matter. Our eyes are on you. And then this man, Yazil. Yahazil. What a name. He stands up and he, and he brings the word of the Lord to, to, uh, to Jehoshaphat. And you know sometimes, guys, we've got Jahazils. That God uses to speak to us. But the challenge is, are we listening to the word of the Lord? Or are we drowning in the natural news? Or are we drowning in the natural circumstances? But the heart of the Lord says, put your eye on me. And here he says, this is the word of the Lord. He says, listen all of you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you, King Jehoshaphat, he's coming to, to Jehoshaphat and he's giving him an encouraging word. And let me tell you, over these last two weeks, I have needed encouraging words. And I've had encouraging words personally from the Lord. But I also know that God has used Jehoshaphat. If you can just put J. He's used those people to just, in some way, their support in the Spirit. Just a word, a prayer, a song. We were listening to a beautiful song that we, when we, were, when we were driving to church this morning. And um, it was just a little song that my aunt sent me, Felicity. And, um, and uh, she, she, she just sent a beautiful song about he carries the weight of the world on his shoulders. And encouragement about how he carries us. His grace carries us. And the peace of God carries us. But in those moments when we're looking at this vast army coming, Jehoshaphat was not superhuman like you and I. And I'm sure he looked and he thought, we're in trouble here. But now the word of the Lord rises up and he says, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. Whatever your great multitude is today, my brother and sister, do not be afraid. Why? For the battle is not yours, but God's. Isn't that beautiful? The battle is his. And then he says in verse 17, 
You will not need to fight in this battle. Just coming close to home for me. I am not fighting cancer. The Lord is. It's not my battle to fight. It's not your battle to fight to convince someone to come back to the Lord. It's not your battle to fight to, you know, to change circumstances that will be more comfortable and easier for you. It, it's not your fight to, to bring someone into your life. That is the Lord's fight. That is the Lord's battle. That is the Lord's choosing. And His timing is always perfect. But the danger is when we start to try and fight these things in our flesh. And the beautiful word that comes to Joseph, but he said, there's this fast army coming your way. It's fast. But the battle is not yours. And then he says, this is the, for me, position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Do not fear or be discouraged or be dismayed. For tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And the good news, and this is the closing scripture that I wanted to share with you. Verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Isn't that beautiful? You don't bring the victory. Your flesh can't change anyone. Your Intelligence can't change anything. Intelligence is a gift. But at the end of the day, our trust is not our, on our own understanding. Our trust every day needs to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, every battle that you are facing, He will fight. Every situation that is a trial for you right now, as I said last week, there is a beginning of a trial and there is a end. And the title of what I shared about last week, which is online now, is the greatest trial as the greatest victory. Isn't that beautiful? Sure. So a trial is a trial, but at the end of the day, there's going to be a great victory. And this is not about, as I said to you last week, this is not about any, anything else, but about our own Walk with Jesus Christ. Please, don't put your eye on me. Put your eye on Jesus. Who's bigger than what you see. And bigger than what you are facing. But one thing that we know. God is with us. And in all things, He will turn things for good. What do you say, Brad? Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. All things. So that is my heart, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, the, the Lord honestly gives me super, supernatural energy to, I think sometimes I can't take for granted even sharing with you today because I, I'm, I'm literally some days, I mean, I'm weak. And by the grace of God, He strengthens me and gives me what I need for that hour, for that moment, for that afternoon. Each day is different. And I thank God that He's with all of us in whatever road we are on, whatever we're facing, and as I said again last week, don't compare yourself to me, I can't compare myself to any one of you, we all have a road, we all have a journey, but remind ourselves every day that the battle is not yours, that battle is his, position yourselves, and what is that position? Keep your eye on the Lord, stay in faith, come back to the anchor of your life, the word of God. Don't listen to the news of men and the voices of good men and good voices. Those voices can be good, but they're drowning you. Come back to the word of the Lord, which has the power to lift you up. And put faith in your heart, because that's what we need every day of our lives. To have faith that puts a, 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 how can I say, something in us supernatural that gives us the ability to face, like Jehoshaphat, he could face the army and see the deliverance of the Lord. Amen? Shall we pray together? Yes. You know, it's, things are different at the moment, but the Lord still builds His church. And, and I really felt strongly in my heart this morning that when, I, I didn't, honestly, I didn't come here 
with any plan to, to share what I shared earlier on, that, uh, the prophecy that the Lord put in my heart. But you realize that the Lord is not religious. And He doesn't need emotions. He just needs a heart that's ready to respond to Him. And I want to pray for all of you today, before we make our little way. Uh, did you want to say anything? Are you okay? Good, good, good. <laughs> Um, always might want to make room for you if you want to. Yeah. Can I say something? Just sit for one moment, Shay, why don't you let this down? Um, just, just to, first of all, just to thank you for your hearts for us. Um, Nick and Julie and the whole team, the way you've taken care of us, we have felt the heart of Jesus. We have felt carried, carried by the Lord carried by you, our brothers and sisters, and just such a huge thank you, you know, and I feel like, you know, we are together, we are fighting this fight of faith together, and that the Lord will use this for his glory, for his church, and he's building all of our lives, and he knows the journey that we have, and he knows how to build the church, and he can turn anything around for good, and be glorified in anything. And everything. And, you know, just one little uh, thought uh, I'll share with you, which has been so real to me, is that, you know, I can tell you, as, as I've just said, I've really felt the heart of Jesus um, for our lives. And, you know, when those I mentioned two weeks ago, and then I think Neil mentioned again last week, when you are in this boat, and the waves seem so high. And you know when the waves break and you, you can't catch your breath and the next one's there. And before you catch your breath, the next one, you feel like you're going to drown, you know. And it's been so, just so incredible to feel the heart of Jesus that he's with us. And I said to, I said to Neil, I don't believe that Jesus was sleeping in that boat. I really don't. I think he was just, he was just quietly waiting. And he was teaching the disciples to rest and to trust it and not to look for the storm to stop but to know that he was with them and that he would take care and that the fears and that the storm would stop on the inside and that in the storm that we're not always looking for it to end although we are looking forward to it ending but we are not sitting in fear until he stands up and says okay that's it it's finished now but he wants to see something in us through what we are going through that we are holding onto him and that we have that deep assurance that rest that he is with us and i have found at my lowest moments when i call to him i know he's right there with me and i draw from him there's a grace that comes that is not not my own strength that's not doesn't come from me and i've said lord increase my faith and he's the author and finisher of our faith and we can call to him and say lord i'm lacking i'm afraid i need you and he picks us up and he gives us what we need and you know there's been times where i've felt like in despair and one hour later i'm rejoicing in him now I, I, that's not me that's the Lord. And some way I have felt that in that boat, he just wants me to rest and to know I'm with, I'm with you. And this is that quiet, deep faith. And there's a verse that says, the Lord is with her, she shall not be moved. And I've just said, Lord, I want to have, to hold on to you. Hold on to you and the faith that you will take us through. And like Neil said, he has just given us so many amazing words. Like the disciples, he said, I'm going to take you there. I'll take you through. But all they could see was the waves and the storm and the, everything. But they forgot what he said. And they forgot that he was with them. And for us, it's not to wait yet. Yes, we are waiting for him to stand up in the boat. But he wants to see a faith. And I believe that that was a time and a challenge for the disciples to grow in trusting him. And whatever we go through, it's a challenge for us to grow in our walk with him and trusting him. To know that he knows the beginning and the end. 
And he's way more powerful than any big storm. I mean, what is that to him? What is sickness to him? Is that any different from taking care of us in any other way? How many miracles? He's reminded us of all the miracles that he's done before. And I think for all of us, we look back and see all the miracles that the Lord has done. And for to put a faith in our hearts, say, Lord, you can and you are able. And when you choose to, you will do it. And we are waiting for a miracle. We are trusting God for a miracle. We are standing together and we know that he will deliver us. But it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. All of them. He will deliver us. But it's that tough time where we have to persevere. Persevere. And it's okay to have bad days. And I have my good days. I have my bad days. I have my ups. I have my downs. But the Lord is with me. And the Lord is with you. And there's such a gratitude in my heart. Because the Lord is more than enough. And when the Lord says, okay, I'm standing up and saying, the storm must stop. The storm must stop. Yeah? But in the meantime, as a church, we grow in whatever is in front of us. And you know, we suffer together, but we will rejoice together. And this is the hope that we have. That we are walking this road together as a family. And we are with you in what you are going through. And you're with us on what we're going through. And, you know, maybe last month and the month before we were strong, and maybe you were struggling or so. Well, you know, that's what the body's about. We all go through our things. And you know what? We need each other. We need each other. And I think I'll say the Lord is sending us a wonderful gift to support Nick and the team here. And how... and just to take care of his church. But it's not just to maintain things. It's to build his church. The Lord knew that this was going to happen a long time ago, and he knows how he's building his church. He knows what he wants to do in our lives. He knows. And he knows what he wants to do in the church. And he's got it all planned out. And this is a time of building and construction and growth in the church. And you will be so blessed. And we will be so blessed. So I just wanted to just share that little something with you. And just to say how much we love and appreciate you. And I know we haven't been able to thank each of you for all the amazing things, the meals, everything. But just really want to say everything is appreciated. We love you. So we're going to pray for you. Is that okay? <clears throat> Stop praying for us. Now you pray. <laughs> We're going to pray for you because you you need the Lord today. You need the strength of the Lord. And the Lord put that word so clearly in my own heart because it's your word from God today. And I believe that with all my heart that as you hold on to the word that you've heard today, you'll go home with a peace and a rest in your heart. Yeah, it's okay. It might have seemed a big drama and a big mountain but we're going to pray today that the Lord just strengthens your heart and just puts a faith in your heart to know that He's with you. Amen? Let's pray together. Should we stand? <clears throat> Lord, I just pray for my brothers and sisters this morning. I know they need you and we all need you every day of our lives. We can't manufacture strength. We can't manufacture faith. We can't manufacture peace. But Lord, we know that you are the Prince of Peace. That you give peace when no man could give peace. You bring a rest, Lord, in our hearts that no man could bring. And I just pray for your church this morning that whatever they are facing, whatever they are going through, strengthen them, Lord. Give them the courage and the perseverance to continue. Let them see in the Spirit today as they go home and go their different ways in this week. Keep reminding them, Lord, to keep their eyes on you. The flesh wants to go there. Our heart wants to go there. But Lord, let our heart in these times come back to one place to keep our eyes on you. And the word that you've placed so clearly in our lives, the gospel, 
and the power of that gospel and the anchor that the word of God is in all of our lives. So Lord, continue to bless every family here. Continue to use each brother and sister here for your glory. Lord, the church continues to grow and to be built by your hand. We thank you for Richard and Ingrid that are coming, Lord. Just give them the tools that they need, the anointing, the health. And Lord, just make a way for them as they travel here and be with us next weekend. Lord, that you're going to speak to your church in a very powerful way. So Lord, this day belongs to you. We put this day in your hands and to you be the glory in your precious name. Amen.